before you begin to study a system you need to specify how many quantities need to be told to uniquely specify the location of that system uh, let me give you a simple uh, example to make clear what i am saying imagine you are looking at the motion of an electron okay electron is a point particle point particle and uh, we want to know how many numbers are needed to specify the location of this electron okay I mean only then we can study the system at least we need to know how to tell where that guy is okay. and clearly if you tell me three numbers x y and z coordinates of this particle i would be able to locate uniquely where that particle is okay so specifying the x y and z coordinates these are your cartesian coordinates uniquely specifies its location so the number is 3 you need in total three numbers okay now it's not necessary that you use cartesian coordinates to tell where that particle is you may choose to specify polar coordinates you may say okay i'll tell you that it is a distance r away from the origin makes a polar angle theta has an azimuthal angle phi okay you can choose to specify these three instead and again as you see the number is 3 okay this 3 is what is called the degree of freedom of this particle okay so in this case there are three independent quantities that need to be specified to uniquely locate your particle the electron in this case now let's say someone says okay i will um, specify x y and z and also specify r okay and then you say okay you need four but well these are not all independent now this once you have told x y and z telling r does not add any new information because r square is x square plus y square plus z square okay r is not an independent quantity so if you tell um okay so let's say the following the number of independent coordinates um we will call degrees of freedom of uh, that system okay so i am defining degrees of freedom of a system to be the so degrees of freedom of a system is the number of independent coordinates independent coordinates quantities whatever you would like to say that uniquely specify the location of your system location configuration whatever you would like to say of your system so that's what degrees of freedom is let's um take few more examples okay so let's say if i have instead of one particle which is free to move around in in space i have n particles which are they may be interacting with each other or maybe not be and we want to know how many degrees of freedom that system has okay so what i'm saying is now we are interested in a system of and particles free to move in space okay 
meaning there are no constraints on this. Now each particle, let's say particle number one, will have coordinate x1, y1, z1. Okay. Particle number two will have coordinates x2, y2, z2, and so on. Nth particle would have xn, yn, zn. Okay. So you see there are three for each of them and there are a total of n. So clearly this system needs three n numbers to be specified. Okay, to uniquely tell where all the particles are located and this is what the degrees of freedom this system has. Okay. So this uh, has three n degrees of freedom. Let me see what else I wanted to say. Okay. Now imagine we put some constraints uh, on your system and constraints will usually reduce uh, the degrees of your freedom, the not your freedom, but degrees of freedom of the system. Let's take an example. Um, let's take an example of, a, again, a point particle, which is constrained to move on a surface. Let's say the surface is flat and is at z equal to zero, okay? To move on a surface. So I'm having this thing in mind right now. You have your this plane which is situated at z equal to zero. Okay, so this is z axis, this is z equal to zero, that's your x axis, that's your y axis. Now, how many degrees of freedom does this particle have? Well, it has only two degrees of freedom. You just need to tell what the x and y coordinates are because there is nothing to be told about z. Wherever it goes, it is always at the same z, right? So this guy has two degrees of freedom. Okay, how about a particle that is constrained to move on the surface of a sphere. Constrained to move on the surface of a sphere. Okay, this is uh, a place where many students go wrong and they are uh, not thinking correctly when they are finding out the number of degrees of freedom for this case, usually they get three. They think that the particle is moving in uh, three dimensions, so it has three degrees of freedom. Well, let's see why that is not correct. Let me go to the next page and see. So the example I'm giving you is of a particle which is moving on the surface of a sphere. Okay, so it's always going to move on this. It doesn't go inside, just the surface. So how many degrees of freedom? Meaning how many independent quantities that need to be specified? Well, let's see. Let's say the radius of this sphere is r. Okay, now particle will be somewhere on the surface. Let's say I draw it here. Now this point can be uniquely fixed by telling what the theta and phi coordinates are. Right? So you just need to tell theta, how many degrees, phi, how many degrees. There's nothing else that you need to tell because r is fixed, right? Wherever it goes, the r is fixed. It, it remains at the same r. So this one, does not have three degrees of freedom, it has two degrees of freedom. Two degrees of freedom. Okay. Now, in the next video, I will tell about 
how to count the degrees of freedom of a rigid body that's also not a difficult thing and uh, that is what we will do in the next video okay see you